latest experiment. It's a big one. It's the one I've been waiting for my whole life. It's, it's a DeLorean. According to my calculations, when this baby hits 88 miles an hour, you are going to see some serious stuff. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You made a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? that Oscar worthy performance. Am I right? Well, move over Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd. More great acting to come throughout the show. <laughs> yes, there is a new Doc and Marty in town. And it's just in time for the 35th anniversary of that iconic 80s film, Back to the Future. I cannot believe it's been 35 years. Well, today is a pretty big day for us here on Show Me St. Louis. It is our annual Halloween special and Eckert's Belleville Farm is hosting us this year. It is so beautiful here. Here's what we have coming up for you on the show today. Every year, an Oakville resident known as the Queen of Halloween goes all out for the holiday. Her house gets transformed into a creepy haunted house for the neighborhood kids. Well, because of the pandemic, so much attention is going to the outside of her home. We'll show you some spooky surprises. It is creepy Christmas. St. Louis is known for a lot of great things. The Gateway Arch, Cardinals Baseball, gooey butter cake. But it's almost Halloween, so we thought we'd focus on some spooky things that we're known for. The employees here, we've all had some kind of experience over the years. So it's not quite the Haunted Mansion at Disney World. Yeah, but it was inspired by it, actually. But unlike Disney, you don't need a ticket to see this Oakville home. At first glance, it appears the Sandvoss family decorated for Christmas early. Open up your eyes and see, they've decorated for Halloween. It is creepy Christmas. The theme changes every year, but you can always count on Julia Sandvoss, dressed up like Mrs. Claus's evil sister, to turn her Oakville home into a haunted house. This is the first year though, the inside won't be open to the public, but she welcomes you to tour the front lawn if you dare. And it's a huge production, but this year obviously we can't invite everyone into our home. So we were trying to come up with something creative that we could still inspire the spirit of the Halloween season and also bring a little joy. <laughs> this is Julia's definition of joy, earning the nickname the Queen of Halloween. I am the Queen of Halloween and also kind of the Queen of Christmas, I think, as well. So on Halloween night, her family will lead the public through her front yard. If you have a mask, please wear your mask and we will lead you through in your groups distance from us through our uh, creepy Christmas display. Her haunted house is one inspired by the happiest place on earth. My whole love of Halloween has been from day one inspired by Disney and their haunted mansion. In case you're wondering, Julia actually does decorate for Christmas and it's not creepy at all. Three full size trees, the house is decorated from head to toe. I've had some very nice people tell me it looks like it should be in a magazine. I really love Christmas. One thing's for sure, Julia's favorite holiday is Halloween. If you want to check it out for yourself, just swing by 7402 Shady Bridge Court in Oakville. Well, because of our jobs here on Show Me St. Louis, we have been on quite a few ghost tours, actually. Yes, and I somewhat willingly went to some creepy places around town just for the holiday. Okay, let's start with one you might have heard of, the Fox Theater. You may have had your own encounter in the 1920s venue, or maybe you first heard about spooky sightings on this show over the years. Well, pretty much everyone who's worked at the Fox says that they've had what they call an experience. Wafts of cigar smoke when no one's around, toilets flushing on their own, the voice of the original owner's wife. So many experiences, in fact, that the St. Louis Paranormal Research Society thought they warranted an investigation, leading them to capture this photo of what they say is a ghostly audience member. Ugh, are you shivering yet? About two hours south, you'll find another beautiful historic building with even older origins. Actually, it's more of a cluster of buildings. The brick structures on the property now are remnants of an all-girls boarding school. They're being refurbished by a local family as a bed and breakfast. I visited before the pandemic and learned that the main building that now houses a restaurant and candy store 
was actually built in the same spot where a Christian college stood in the mid 1800s. And just miles from Fort Davidson, the building was converted into a hospital for dying Union soldiers. There are tales of a Civil War soldier roaming the hallways. There have also been sightings of the spirit of a little boy killed in the 1900s by a train who was the nephew of a nun living on the grounds. Missouri's Paranormal Task Force actually captured audio of several what they called unexplained voices during their investigation there. And across the river in Illinois, there's a whole lot of rumored spiritual unrest. Historically, the dead have had quite a hard time finding their ultimate resting place in East St. Louis. According to historic papers, many a ghastly skeleton was swept out of a burial ground and washed down the Mississippi during an 1844 flood. Residents then claimed an ancient tribal burial mound to bury their own. That mound and the centuries of people buried there were reportedly dug up to fill in an on-ramp for the Eads Bridge in the 1870s. Investigations and sightings by everyday people in East St. Louis claim that those disrupted grave dwellers weren't too happy about all the relocation. Turns out we've got quite a connection to the macabre. Coming up today on the show, a back to the future inspired recipe. It combines two food references from the movies. Stick around to learn the how-to from one of our favorite bakers, Serena Gellner. And now for our daily trivia, here's today's question. In honor of our Back to the Future Halloween special, how many times was the Back to the Future script rejected before Universal finally bought it? It was at none, 12, 40 times, or 27 times. How can I be so careless? 1.21 gigawatts? How can I turn around the credit power? All we need is a little plutonium. I'm sure in 2020, plutonium is available in every corner drugstore, but in 1985, it's a little hard to come by. Marty, I'm afraid you're stuck here. 2020, that's kind of heavy. More fantastic acting, as promised. <laughs> Doc, I mean, Courtney, we better not uh, quit our day jobs, though. Hey, at least we nailed the look, Dana, right? I mean, sorry, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th that is true. Now, I know you're not used to seeing us like this on TV. So let's get you something that you're used to seeing on our show. How about food? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be an episode of Show Me St. Louis without it. And remember Back to the Future 2, how they predicted dehydrated pizza would be a thing by now? Mm, I'm kind of glad that it's not. Oh, do you remember <laughs> that scene at Lou's Cafe in 1955? Like, Lou, give me a milk. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Well, our next guest, Sarita Gellner of Ritzy Mom, combines the two movie references. Ready for this? For chocolate dessert pizza. Hmm. For today's spectacular Back to the Future Show Me St. Louis Halloween episode, we are going to pick two fabulous themes from Back to the Future, which were pizza and chocolate milk. We're gonna do a little mashup and we're gonna make an awesome chocolate dessert pizza. It is super easy to make. You can make it as semi-homemade to homemade as you want it to be. All you need is a pre-made pizza crust, or if you're like Dana Dean, you're making your own, and a few toppings of your choice to make an awesome pizza. The first step to making your chocolate dessert pizza is to have your dough risen and ready to be shaped into a 12 inch circle. You're gonna preheat your oven to 450 degrees and you're gonna have some parchment paper that's just lightly floured so we can shape this into a 12 inch round. Remember when shaping your pizza that the thicker that you want it, the smaller round you're gonna have it. And if you want it a little bit thinner and crispier, then you're gonna make it a bigger sized pizza. Once you have your pizza all shaped into a round, you're gonna take some melted butter. We're gonna brush this along the pizza. This is gonna help it have flavor and texture and give it some color. And this is where, this is just an easy pizza to make that you really don't need many ingredients or tools, which I love. Because on Halloween, you can get your kids to do this for fun. Um, it's just a really cool pizza. It's good for family night too. Once you have that brush with butter, you're gonna slide it onto a baking sheet. We're gonna bake this pizza for about 15 to 20 minutes until it's golden brown and ready for topping. Now it's the best time, decoration time. So we're going to use some chocolate hazelnut spread. You can also use peanut butter if you wanna switch things up or a combination of two. You're gonna whisk it up just a little bit so it's easy to spread and then we're gonna put this all over the pizza as the sauce. This is ooey gooey, chocolatey fun. This is going to be so decadent and delicious. Once you have all of your chocolate hazelnut spread as your sauce, you're gonna take some different chocolate chips. I have some dark chocolate chips that I'm gonna sprinkle over. 
I'm gonna do white chocolate chips as well. Just a mixture of chocolatey chips of any kind that you like. I also cut up a chocolate candy bar because it is Halloween, so I wanna throw a little bit of Halloween candy on here. I'm going to use some nuts, like hazelnuts. You can use almonds or peanuts or anything that you want. So now we're just gonna bake this again for about one minute just to melt all of this up, and then we'll come back and we're gonna eat our pizza. Happy Halloween, I think this really is the pizza of the future. Wash that down with a good old Diet Pepsi and you got yourself a Back to the Future meal. A big shout out to Sarita for today's very creative recipe. Thank you so much. You can find this recipe after the show on YouTube by searching KSDK News. It'll also be in the Five on Your Side app. And you can find more delicious dessert recipes from Sarita on her website, ritzymomblog.com. And don't forget to follow her on social media. Well, we're having so much fun dressing up as Doc and Marty. And really the only thing we need is a dog. Oh, and who's a good girl? This is Rosie. She is Eckert's official mascot. Isn't she just the sweetest? And if you remember in the movies, Doc's dog was named Einstein. And speaking of pets, there is a socially distanced trick or treat potty for pets coming up. Yeah, come here, come here. Well, <laughs> it's going to be so adorable with all the pets dressed in costume. You're so and there'll be plenty of treats for them to get in the Halloween spirit, too, thanks to Treats Unleashed. <laughs> You're so wonderful. Teresa, welcome back to Show Me St. Louis. Hi, Dana. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. So we all have our favorite fall treats. I love everything pumpkin. So what do you have for pet parents to give to their fur babies? We definitely have pumpkins. And then this year, we're doing personalized pumpkins. So you can see the jumbo five-inch pumpkins we're doing. Uh, all natural ingredients decorated with a, a yogurt and then personalized with your pet's name. We've always sort of got our normal pumpkin soft bites, which are a big hit, something a little bit softer. And we've been doing some fun things this year. Um, we're doing kind of a pumpkin spice latte. We use pure pumpkin a lot for digestion, really helps with upset stomachs um, and, uh, and some of those things that your pet might come by. So a little bit of goat's milk, a little bit of pure pumpkin, and the dogs like it. If you're looking for something a little bit more spooky with the kids, um, I've got a bowl of fresh blueberries here. So blueberries are really good for dogs, antioxidants and things like that. And then you can do a bone broth. Um, so it's a little bit more uh, like an applesauce texture and uh, your pups will love being able to dive for the blueberries. Okay, did I hear a dog in the background begging for some treats? <laughs> he's, he's watching me make the pumpkin. So this is Cooper. Uh, this is my dog and he's dressed up for Halloween. So come on, Coop. Um, and he loves the, uh, the pumpkin lattes. He'll be attending our party this weekend. So we are gonna do things a little bit differently this weekend. <laughs> He's going to town. <laughs> uh, we normally have a big trick or treat party at Treats Unleashed. A lot of fun, bring your dog in costume. We're gonna do it a little bit differently this year. We're still inviting you to bring your pup in costume. Okay, Coop, you're good, buddy. Thank you. Uh, so our Halloween parties this year are gonna be a little bit more to go. So you can bring your pup in costume. You're welcome to bring in your costume as well. And you can come and pick up a to-go bag of treats. We're also extending it to be from nine to four on Saturday. We usually do them in kind of a short period of time, but we're extending it to kind of keep those distances available. Okay, I'm really impressed that you got Cooper to stop eating the latte. That's very <laughs> impressive. Yeah, he's a good boy. A good dog. Okay, um, now you'll have uh, special Halloween promotions going on too. We do. And in fact, this week we've had a fun Halloween promotion going on called our Body Part Sale. It's an annual sale for us. But we know that dog likes things like um, pig's ears and bones and things like that. So we have all of those discounted this week. They're 20% off. So you can come in and get a bully stick or something for your dog to chew on. Um, we've got beef chief treats. We've got a variety of chicken feet, all kinds of horrible sounding things that are actually pretty healthy for your dog. Okay, raw bones? Are you talking about the same uh, leftovers from the dinner table? No, no leftover bones from the dinner table because those have all been cooked. Um, and no chicken, those are turkey, because those bones are way too flexible. Um, and they can be a hazard to your pet. Thank you so much. You're invited to the Trick or Treat Potty for Pets at your neighborhood Treats Unleashed tomorrow, Saturday, October 31st, anytime from 9 to 4 p.m. Costumes encouraged, not required. Get a free to go goodie bag of treats and shop the 20% off of body part sale. Ooh. <laughs> also, all the links to everything we talked about in the segment is on ksdk.com. Oh no, it's coming! Blood! Doc, I got.
gotta tell you about the future! No, Marty, there's no time! I've got to tell you! Hey, oh, Marty. 20! Uh, 20! No, Marty, I can't know about the future! You have to hear this! No, Marty, no! Doc. There's no... There's no toilet paper. never gonna live that down but sure had a lot of fun taping those scenes with you this is so ridiculous it's not embarrassing at all no. welcome back to our annual <laughs> halloween special here on show me st louis as you can see we've made it out of our home studios and are at eckert's belleville farm and yeah, you might have noticed in those nice little vignettes <laughs> throughout the show that we got to use a real life delorean and it really put our costumes over the top this year our sweet ride is from Gateway Classic Cars in O'Fallon, Illinois. The showroom there has a couple hundred classic cars and exotic cars for sale. We featured this incredible place before in Show Me St. Louis, although because of the pandemic, they are not open to the public just by appointment. Some DeLoreans are more valuable than others, if you're curious. One in good condition could be worth between fifty dollars and $60,000. Flex capacitor not included. Fun fact about the DeLorean, they are cool to look at thanks to the stainless steel body, but they are not known for being fast like in the movie, which means it would actually be extremely difficult for Doc or Marty to hit 88 miles per hour and make time travel possible. Sorry to say. I don't know if it'll actually even go up to 88 miles an hour. <laughs> That's a good question. They were, they were kind of a car that they were known for the styling, not the speed. So John DeLorean, when he when he designed that car, it was kind of his baby, and uh, that's a lot of people now that buy them, they're actually putting the LS motors in them to make them faster now. Well, you can check out the place by visiting gatewayclassiccars.com. It's located in O'Fallon, Illinois. Phone number on your screen. You're bound to find some gems at Gateway Classic Cars, and here's another place you might find some at an antique sale. There's an antique sale going on tomorrow, Halloween day, at Cabin in the Woods Antiques. How fitting. It's a cute cabin in the woods, like the name suggests, in Labadee, Missouri. It's taking place from 10 till 5. Costumes are encouraged. You can make a whole day out of it in Labadee as well. Hit up one of the local restaurants, visit Labadee Station for more antiques, sip whiskey at the distillery, and try some craft beer at Labadee Brewery. The address for Cabin in the Woods Antiques is number 30 Log Cabin Lane. For more information, call 314-363-4021. Masks are required and they will be practicing social distancing. Earlier in the show, we asked you today's trivia question. In honor of our Back to the Future Halloween special, how many times was the Back to the Future script rejected before Universal bought it? It was C, 40 times. Can you believe that? Well, if you're just tuning in, I'm Dana Dean as Marnie McFly. And I'm Courtney Woodleman as Doc Brown. Back to the Future is celebrating 35 years this year, so we figured we'd have a little fun with it. Plus, it's 2020, and I'm sure a lot of us would love to use time travel right now to go to another year. And we're at Eckert's Belleville Farm, and it's kind of perfect. We're at a farm because, do you remember in the first movie, there was a farm scene where Marty crashes into a barn in the DeLorean. Yeah, so it is perfect that we're at a farm. And if you don't have any Halloween plans yet, they've got some really fun stuff happening. Like this, there is a Halloween scavenger hunt that began this morning at 9. The clues will guide you throughout the farm, and when you make it to the end, you'll win a prize. Come dressed in your costume and enjoy their Halloween parade while you're there. That's until 2 today. The scavenger hunt goes until 3, and you can show up anytime. The Halloween scavenger hunt costs $5 a child, which includes the hunt and prizes. Your spot must be reserved online at Eckert's.com. You'll check in at the front of the garden center. If you can't make it today, the fun is also happening tomorrow on Halloween. Well, Halloween kind of ends our fall season here, so we're all really excited that everybody comes out and enjoys the farm, and it's an outdoor activity, um, so I think the weather's going to be great, and it's a way for families to start their Halloween weekend. You can spend some of your time at Eckert's. You can still pick apples if you'd like to, um, enjoy some goodies from our country store, and really make it a fun day. Kids need to have fun this Halloween. There's so many things that are so different, so we're just excited to be hosting 
some events where families can enjoy the season. Our Halloween special has come to an end. Yes, but if you remember at the end of the first Back to the Future, Doc takes Marty and Jennifer back to the year 2015. I'm guessing Doc didn't go to 2020 for a reason. Yeah, great mm. Scott, no. <laughs> well, we will be back on Monday as Dana and Courtney. We'll see you then.